Hey everyone, Lupin the Third made significant change in the modern style in Part 5. Before this, it had a few film spin-offs like Digian Gravestone and Goemon's Bloodspray. But Part 5 is a full season with stunning visual. The premise and presentation look slick, but for me, the best part is the environment. Each set looks like a classic painting, and it goes so well with the new presentation. Today, I'll be covering the first two arcs of Part 5. Lupin the Third Part 5 consists of several major arcs. It's spanning 4 or 5 episodes. Then we have classic side story in between. Now, the anime calls these arcs episodes. So for the sake of clarity, I'll avoid using too many numbers for episodes or parts. Instead, I'll specifically address the Lupin game and Black Notebook arc. The season opens with Lupin and Jigen trying to steal digital currency from Marco Polo, a website on dark web. This leads them to Ami, a genius female hacker trapped in Twin Towers, like some kind of modern-day fairy tale. After coming to an agreement, Lupin breaks her free in exchange for her help. Little did they know, Marco Polo put a bounty on Lupin, and global manhunt called Lupin Game ensues. This is a perfect way to start the season with modern touch. The tone of the series changed significantly compared to part 4, with a lot of reference to modern technology, chatroom, and constant perspective switch to video feed. Its overall production just feels different, but it still retains the retro European look. This presentation also carries over to later spin-off, Mini Fujiko's Lie. The visual doesn't just compete with new anime, it is frankly one of the best production in recent years. And considering we have so many amazing titles lately, it's impressive Lupin still manages to be top tier after more than 50 years. I also like the addition of Ami into the cast. Introducing a prodigy character, especially in anime, can be tricky. She could easily be another Mary Sue or come off as arrogant, but I think they managed to make her endearing. She's very direct and effective in her actions, almost emotionless. But as she is freed from her cage, she experiences new things and slowly becomes more expressive. Of course, Lupin's crew is not the most suitable environment for a young girl, and amidst the ongoing battle royale, she must adapt quickly. This creates a good dynamic with Lupin, as he becomes an inadvertent mentor. It is often challenging for both of them, but also leads to good character development. Ami is a good-natured person, but many bad things happen to her that limit her ability to reach out to other people. While she might look in defense, she still cares for others. This is a good way to connect with younger audience, since most of Lupin characters are adult. Ami is struggling to find her place, and I think Mini Fujiko puts the sentiment best when she said to her, don't grow up too fast. Another good thing from Lupin Game Arc is the clash against other famous criminals. There's a good back and forth exchanges, and also cat and mouse game. The action is solid enough, but I do wish there's more backstory for the various antagonists, like they had on spin-off titles. Still, it's more than presentable arc to start off part 5. The next arc is Black Notebook, and also Reunion with Albert, Lupin's old rival. If Lupin game has fancy technology, Black Notebook is returned to classic atmosphere. This is where the series showcases its gorgeous vistas. Nearly every frame or set looks incredibly crisp and smooth. The use of color and contrast make the scene oozes with style. However, the narrative is a bit dry. The main conflict revolves around a notebook that has secrets of powerful people. Lupin took one particularly odd job and soon he got caught up in political struggle between many parties looking for the notebook. It can get a bit muddled, but it also leads him to Albert, a formidable foe and old friend of Lupin. This is definitely the stronger part of the arc. Both of them have many battles of wits, and it's also refreshing to see Lupin in his younger days. This arc also presents better action, with several nearly superhuman mercenaries chasing both Lupin and Albert. It looks like something out of Kill Bill movie, with Goemon and Jigen also participate in dangerous fights. 
I like the enemy design as well, more than the ones they have on Lupin game. And while there's slower part on this arc, the climax definitely delivers more impact. Lastly, between these arcs, part 5 also caters to nostalgia, as it shows sad episode with classic style, kinda like filler to be honest. But it gives emphasis on how much the franchise has changed over the years. It had more whimsical ones, with much lighter tone, almost like Doraemon. Mini Fujiko changed the most in my opinion. She was much more comical back then compared to her now current femme fatale persona. That's it for now, I will try to spread the review rather than piling the whole season at once. Thank you for watching, please leave a like and comment, consider subscribing and share with your friends, I make 3 videos every week. Have a nice day and I'll see you in the next one.